there's just so much evil in this world. We keep praying for people in Ukraine, and now we keep praying about the victims of all the senseless violence, taking precious children's lives, and our mind focused on, on those who are facing such terrible prospects ahead, the refugees, so many others. Our hearts go out for Peggy and Bill McElveen in the final steps of his journey on earth. With heavy hearts, we ask your tender care to attend to the needs of so many. Lead world and national leaders to find peace and healing. We pray for the President of the United States, for our lawmakers, and for this congregation we pray. Heal us, our families, our faith families, kith and kin, all who bear a burden of illness or loss <clears throat> or chronic health problems. Father, draw our faith family ever closer to you this morning. We commit the weakest of us to your care, confident of your promises, assured of your presence, and surrounded by your love. Come quickly, O oh God, in power, in grace, and with mercy. For we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Amen. Our next hymn is number 371. We will sing the first, second, and fourth verses. Let's stand as we sing. <coughs> I see what great things I know that he loves and serves me so. God, not to my wife. She would not have it otherwise. What has God done? The English translation from Numbers 23, 23, which in the King James Version reads, What hath God wrought? But the original Hebrew is not a question. There's no question mark in it. It's an exclamation of sheer awe and amazement. May fall in L. Oh, look! 
Exclamation mark. What God has done. Exclamation mark. Not a question mark. I thought I was going to be okay today until we, the choir started singing. It is well with my soul. Written by a pastor, a man who had just lost his wife. And uh, one of Martha Joe's favorites. So I just want to tell you, Martha Jo loved you and she felt your love. It brought her more happiness in our ministry than she has ever experienced before. And I give you my heart and my soul because you did that for her. And thank you for the financial gift that this church gave and, uh, and the way it was given. Marie and Jeff came over Fletcher was with them, and the card says, You are not alone. And signed, Everybody. Thank you. I love you. Your financial gift, I want you to know, paid for all of her funeral expenses, just about to the dollar. When I lived in Los Angeles, I attended Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, one of the largest African American congregations in the United States. Pastor Evie Hill, Evie Hill, asked me to help him there, and he said, "Come, come help." So I did. And when Martha Joe died, I thought of when he faced the death of his wife, and he did so by trusting in Job 121. The Lord gave; the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, I may not get through this sermon without emotion. I, uh, I thought I was going to be all right for a while, but may not, though. May be rough. But I'm going to have you to help me with your understanding. Because I'm experiencing two things I'm crying. A lot and I'm getting stronger today I tell you what God has done it's personal for me but I believe God can use this to give you hope in your loss and my daughter Elizabeth is here she and I were at the hospital when dr. Osborne told us from a medical perspective what happened to Martha Joe blood clot in her arms cut off the oxygen to her brain. It was sudden. Her eyes were open one moment, she was gone the next second. In Job 1.21, I hear God telling me what happened, not in a medical perspective, but all but in a, a, from His perspective, which is also true. What God has done, the Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So you're going to help me. In Martha Jo. In Martha Jo, the Lord gave a strong woman with unbreakable faith, fierce faith. And uh, this sermon, I, I thought, you know, we just left. Our family had a memorial service, and we went to the gravesite. And, and no one here who loved Martha Joe had a word spoken of comfort. No one came up to you and gave you a card that said, you'll not be alone. And I want to do that today. I want to tell you how Martha Joe raised her, our children and work to put me through college and seminary under prolonged sacrifice and frequent pain. Persevering as the champion she was, and what first attracted to me, to her, to, uh, me to her, was this gener generous, genuine devotion and dedication to God and God's work. I knew that when I married this woman, I would not be first in her life. Thank God, I would be second. But I had asked God for years to lead me to someone just like that, and God gave me that. The Lord 
game. Uh, this was written by one of our dear friends in part says, I was 15 when I trusted Jesus Christ. And one friend who came to me was and discipled me was Martha Jo Coates. Through the next few years, she talked with me, prayed with me, guided me. She was always with a loving smile. But then I married Barry and she married Bruce. And Bruce was led to the pastoral ministry and God had given him Martha Jo, the perfect pastor's wife. And she was right to say, the Lord gave. To serve God's purpose for us both, Martha Jo made sure that I lacked nothing ever. She worked years in a psychiatric uh, agencies and different ones, helping others to make sure that they lacked nothing. She had to she had to drive to protect them, help them, comfort them, befriend them, just like me. When she went to her first job interview, psychiatric hospital, they asked her, do you have any experience with mentally ill people? And with her bright smile and her laugh, she said, only my husband. <laughs> she was a dynamo, tireless, a born encourager. Imagine living with that kind of blessing almost 54 years. My spiritual guide, she was the captain of our ship. She was the wisdom in our marriage. My coach, my life coach, the mother of all broken people, including one broken pastor. Sacrifice after sacrifice, always pushing beyond her limit. For God, for me, for us, God, the Lord, gave. I'm not the strong fortress in Christ. I am not the mighty warrior who conquers spiritual enemies. She was my fortress. She was my strength. She was my warrior, not me. I don't know what you're going to get after this week. In her home church last week, I heard story after story. Well, she was the hardest worker in the church, 16 years old, relentless for God. <laughs> Went on to attend Southeastern Bible College, the Billy Graham Institute. And after her stroke, she just kept on going. She worked so hard to recover. She said, don't call me a stroke victim. Call me a stroke warrior. My dear friends, the Lord gave. In those early days when we first started together, it was on Sunday morning before we headed to church, she would say, hold, stop, let me look at you, straighten that tie, comb your hair. And she, then she would say before we left, do I look good? And I would say, you look good. You look very good. The Lord gave. She did not require a fur coat, just a simple dress. She did not require a Rolls Royce. Just a good use for it. She did not require fine dining. Some chicken and a good recipe is fine. She did not require jewelry from Saks. She just wanted something pretty. And when I was ordained, I said, now it's your turn. You go to grad school. I'm working, I'm, I'm putting you through. She said, no, I am doing exactly what God told me to do. What God wants for me. The Lord gave. As far as a wife is concerned, I was one of the and am one of the richest men on earth. Because of her, I had all my heart's desire. The Lord gave. And the Lord taketh away. So we get used to the Lord giving. And when the Lord taketh, we think it's evil, coincidence, fate, chance. As long as the Lord is giving, we say we're happy, we're being blessed. But now I'm preaching to you from the Word of God, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be in the name of the Lord. When He does not give you what you want, blessed be the name of the Lord. When He breaks your heart, blessed be the name of the Lord. So the doctor gave us the medical perspective. She had given all she could. 
she had no more. But the Spirit says, The Lord taketh away, O oh bless his name. All right, I'm coming to the rough part. Bear with me. It's, uh, it's just so personal, I usually don't ever do this. Last week I prayed to God and I went to Him and said, I've got to talk to you, not as a pastor, not even as a... It's nothing but a man. I don't know how to talk to you right now. I don't know what to say to you. I don't know where to begin. I want her back. I want to take care of her. I want to comfort her. I want to see her. I want to hold her. I want to kiss her. I'm in the greatest pain I've ever thought of imaginable. And you want me to love her enough to let her go. What do I do? Thank God Walter Coley was sent to me by God at the hospital when we were there. And he said, if we believe in God, then we need to believe in God. Walter's walk in my shoes. I listened to him. God sent him. God put words in old Walter's mouth. If we believe in God, then we need to believe in God. God said, I sent Walter to you to tell you to believe in me, so believe in me. Believe in me to take care of her while she's out of your sight. She finished everything I asked of her. Her work was done. It was hard. So don't begrudge me if I want to give her her reward. And God brought to mind Revelation 14. Those who die in the Lord from now on, He said the Spirit, they rest from their labors. And I said to God, I know that. I know it. I know it in my head. I've read it a million times before, but help me understand. What happens to people from whom the Lord taketh? What happens to people to whom the Lord will say, no, I'm not going to heal you? God, God said, no, you can't see her. No, you can't hear her. You just have to believe in me, okay? Isaiah 26, those who die in the Lord will live. Their bodies will rise again. Believe in me. 2 Corinthians, she is absent from the body, but present with the Lord. Believe in me. Romans 8, death is swallowed up in victory. Believe in me. In the Bible, Jesus said, look at me. I died, but I'm alive now, forever and ever. Believe in me. Romans 8, the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. Believe in me. God said, do you think she looked good when she went out that door to church with you? You just wait and see her now. I will take her out of her earthly vessel. I will put on her shining robes. You just wait. Just believe in me. And God said, I, I came for her. Remember that. Not you. You're not done yet. I want you to finish becoming the man that I made you through Martha Joe Coates. I used to call her, or used to think of her as my little Calvinist. I was Methodist when we married. She went to the Presbyterian Church. I was going to the Methodist Church. Like good couples, we decided to uh, compromise, which meant, meant I joined the Presbyterian Church. <laughs> My little Calvinist. And she, she would say quickly, I'm not your little anything. <laughs> John Calvin, when he died, gave instructions. I want a simple funeral. Wrap me in mourning cloths. Put me in a simple casket. Put me in a grave. Don't, don't give me a marker. Don't put my name on a, on a, on a rock. Don't preach about me, preach about Christ. Galatians 2 says, Not I, but Christ. Likewise, Martha Joe. She wanted her ashes taken, put on her granddaughter's grave. And Martha and Elizabeth, her son John, did the honor. 
of doing just as she wanted. And I'll tell you that whenever I go there, whether it's in person or in my heart, I will look down at those two and I will say, oh, look what God has done. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. 